Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now am found, was blind, but now I see. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. In the darkness that day, as Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary for the sins of humankind, nobody but Jesus God the Father and God the Holy Spirit really knew what was being accomplished. Every human being only saw darkness, despair, and no hope. Since God is both just and holy, and because the sins of humankind were too numerous and too heinous to overlook, Jesus the perfect God-man went in our place to the cross of Calvary not to pay for his own sins, because he had none, but to pay for our sins that we could be reconciled with God the Father and so that we might enter a perfect, sinless heaven. He died, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and three days later rose from the dead, thus verifying that Jesus is Lord and God and victor over death and sin. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Jesus says, you must be born again. It's not by works, not by doing enough holy deeds. It's not by being born into a religious family. Jesus paid for your salvation. You can add nothing to his completed work. It is already finished. You must accept that gift of salvation that Jesus has purchased. What does Jesus say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith with which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Jesus who is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus, 
who is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Jesus, who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, who removes our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, who casts our sins into the deepest of seas and remembers them no more choosing to not hold them against us. For he has said, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus who says, follow me, and you shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus who proclaims, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world.